Tune in, tune in, tune in. Tune in, you guys. I got some um, things that I want to discuss regarding credit and what I see on a daily basis, unfortunately, um, as I'm updating my profiles. So I wanted to, good evening, everybody. I wanted to speak with you briefly regarding credit. Um, and there's a lot of things that I see that I don't think that people are being advised on. I think they're just doing things randomly without having the proper information, which is a huge concern because it's affecting credit more than helping. One of the things that I wanted to go over with you guys is adding yourself on others' trade lines without knowing the information prior. Um, I know I've done a live once before where I have advised for you to add yourself on someone's trade line, meaning add yourself as an authorized user to increase your scores. However, you guys are allowing, you're, at, you're getting on trade lines that are worse than um, what you currently have. Know, the, know, know for a fact that trade lines can affect you and also can um, help you. It's imperative that you know this because I see a lot of people getting on trade lines. The balance, the limit is 5000 and the person owes 5500 That is not helping. Be very cautious of that, adding yourself on other trade lines. I also wanted to let you guys know, I know it's, it's probably about 70% of people, well, here in, in, in Memphis, for sure, utilization is detrimental to your credit, guys. You got to know that. When it comes down to you having... Um, these high balances, you have to know that these high balances are affecting your credit report. You should not have um, a fifteen hundred dollar limit and you owe sixteen hundred dollars. Um, that is that that is affecting your scores. I want you to do some research and Google credit utilization. Once you Google that, you will see you can drop your scores a hundred points minimally if you um, don't have your utilizations in order. That's what I see. Um, a lot of people overuse those credit cards. Just think if you were a bank or if you were loaning somebody some money, you own, loaned them $500 and they owe $480 and they're paying $25 a month on it. Would you loan them more money? The answer would be no. So please be weary. If you have a 600, 700 credit score already and every time you apply for a loan, you're only getting $300 and $500 limits. That is the reason why. A lot of times when I do my credit consultations, I see on here people's credit is in the 600s, low 600s, maybe even 500s. And they have no derogatory accounts. It's primarily because of the overutilization of these credit cards. If you have an issue with using the credit card, which some people do, that is a thing. I would highly recommend putting the credit card in a glass and pour, filling it with water and putting it in the freezer and literally freeze them. If that's going to be a concern or an issue with over utilizing your cards. Um, so if you're wanting to get higher limits and you're wanting to get higher scores, you must certainly have to utilize those cards responsibly. Um, and there's no way that a bank will actually give you more uh, money or more higher limits if you're not you're not using the one that you currently have responsibly. Um, anytime I use my card, for me personally, cards are for emergencies only, my personal cards. Um, and I also use them for uh, me to get higher limits or for me to get more access to lines of credit and stuff like that or points or me get sky miles or whatever. So credit cards can help and they can harm as well. I've done several consultations where I see people, if they have 10 credit cards and every single credit card is over utilization. Y'all, that hurts your scores almost as much as a late payment does. Credit utilization per account hurts your score by 30%. So a late payment is 35%. So just imagine if you have five credit cards and each credit card that you have is over the utilization. The formula for utilization is you take the limit. So let's just say $500 is your credit card limit. 30% of that is $150. Every time your balance goes over $150, your scores are going to drop tremendously. And that is what the issue is here in the city that I see all the time. Like here, I have a Capital One card. Credit limit is 500. They owe 462. So in that case, 
um, their credit one bank card, credit them at $500, they owe $481. It doesn't matter that you're making your payments on time. It's only going to reflect the fact that you are overutilizing your accounts, which is not a good thing. So I always remember that. When you're trying to purchase a home, I also wanted to let you guys know this is what I see as well. You're asking credit uh, repair companies or whatever to remove student loans or remove bankruptcies off of your credit report because you're trying to purchase a home. Please note that those are all federal um, accounts. So even if it is removed off of your credit report, it still will show up in what you call a Kyber's report when you have your um, when you have the report pulled in the middle of the process of purchasing a home. So please don't think for one second that you're able to finesse the system and not you know get around you having a bankruptcy or student loans. Those are all federal debt, and they do have other systems outside of credit reporting. So I've seen a lot of people not be able to close on their property because the student loans were not on their credit report, but it ended up being on this coverage report. So that's something I wanted to let you guys know. Don't be too quick to ask someone to remove a bankruptcy or remove um, student loans off of your credit report because at the end of the day, it's still going to pop up. Um, the number one thing that I see, um, and I'm going to change my program up a little bit. My credit program is I'm going to start screening every single person that goes and that comes into my credit program or actually pays online there is going to be a consultation that has to be done generally i used to allow people to pay for the program in full but now i'm going to change that all the way because i'm getting people enrolled in the program and don't understand anything relating to credit and it's frustrating for me because no matter how long i work on the credit report you know all of the negativity i just don't i don't deal with it because just because you're um you're not aware of how credit works let's be very clear results are going to be different according to the credit profile if i have client a client a is going to have six collections and three great accounts three accounts they've actively been paying on and they're actively open so if you have three positive accounts have great payment history and you've been having these accounts for a while and you have six open i mean you have six collections then of course once i remove the collections your scores are going to be tremendously higher because you have actual positive accounts versus someone who has 12 collections and no positive accounts your results are not going to be the same as someone who had positive accounts initially if that makes any sense so prime example um as far as the credit credit restoration credit restoration and credit building is two entirely different things and two different entities if you have challenging credit meaning that you have a lot of credit collections you have a lot of derogatory accounts on your credit report then that needs to be restored once your once your um, file is restored then you can start and go on into the world and start to build your credit i never ever have stated that i do credit rest a uh, credit uh building because i don't credit building is not something that i offer I've never claimed to offer it and it's definitely not on my website i do not offer credit building that is something that you do on your own also i wanted to let you guys know um when you start buying these trade lines there's absolutely nothing wrong with it but just know that is borrowed credit and when you're trying to purchase a home that is not that does not suffice for you to purchase a home so do not start paying all this money for um trade lines and then try to buy a house because you have a 760 because it, you those scores that you see is not going to reflect that on a mortgage score because mortgage scores do not give you the same amount of points for trade lines as they would an account that is actually yours because it is labeled as a trade line in the system so if you see on your credit report it will say authorized user so the system knows that you are an authorized user and you are not the actual account holder so that's another thing that i wanted to address now as far as back to my program I'm going to eliminate if you do not have positive accounts on your credit profile and I do not think that you're a great candidate and if you don't have an understanding um, of how credit works then I will not accept you into my program um, a lot of people just don't understand how that goes the number one thing that gives you scores that actually score you outside of your late payments and outside of utilization the number one thing where you get your scores from is how you pay your bills on time do you pay them on time do you pay the bare minimal do you pay over what the um, minimal payment is that is how you score how do you expect your scores to increase if you do not have any positive accounts that you're actively paying on it's just sometimes some things are common sense and unfortunately that's not so common now but it's very unfortunate 
um, how a lot of people don't understand you have to restore your credit before you move on to the next stage of rebuilding um, and that's one of the things that I have came across unfortunately in a lot of different uh, situations so my advice would be to first restore your credit another thing about my credit restoration program I do not allow my clients to make false police reports so my program does take a little longer versus someone who's going to falsify documents and all maybe cause you to be a to, to be in a situation to where you could possibly be prosecuted. I don't do credit restoration that way. I literally get the accounts off of your credit report and when they're off, they do not return. Any of my clients will let you know that. Now, if the account returns, it's always going to be a new collection agency. It's not going to be the exact same account. It's going to be the same debt, but it's going to be a different um, co uh, credit collection agency. Now, what happens is if you have a collection that is almost seven years old, or older then it has to fall off of your credit report if it does not fall off your credit report then what they will do is after seven years they will sell that account to a collection agency to go ahead and keep that seven years going once the collection is sold to a collection agency the seven years start all over again so the account and the debt could possibly be 10 15 years old but it's constantly recycling every single time it's sold to another collection agency so you have to be extremely patient. Um, I will not allow you in my program if you are in a 400 or 500 and you're saying, can I buy a house in the next 30 days? Some things are just non-realistic, okay? And I'm not going to put myself in a situation. My program is extremely affordable. And it's that way because I do not make the bulk of my money for credit restoration. I literally sit in my office hours at a time updating files after file after file. And I do this three or four times a week. I have a process that I submit your letters. I get your file. I submit your letters. Your letters go out. And every 30 days, your, your report is up refreshed every single 30 days. So when you log in, you will see that your report has been refreshed. Now, I do not provide every 30 days updates if there's nothing to update if you if your scores have not changed if i don't see anything that you've done if i don't see any new collections there's no reason to contact you and say hey everything's the same that makes no sense now if there's something on your credit report like i see that your over utilization anything that i see that is detrimental to your credit scores you will get a text message from me or you will get a call from me i'm very very passionate about what i do but what i will not do is allow somebody in my program that does not have realistic expectations and that's something that i will not do and that is what I have come across a lot of times um, a lot of people don't understand that credit once again the majority of your credit score is based off of how do you pay your bills do you pay your bills on time and do you pay the bare minimum that is how you're scored if you remove all derogatory accounts more than likely, you're not going to have a score whatsoever. Now, if you do have derogatory accounts on there, then it's time to rebuild and add a positive account. My recommendation, I don't use all of those third-party um, accounts that you throw on your credit report because that that's, for me, I don't know how that's effective. But what I highly recommend is either doing a secure credit card with a reputable credit card company or go through your bank and ask your bank, do they offer second um, second chance programs, credit building programs? I know Regions does. I know Navy Federal does. Most um, uh, credit unions, I know, most credit unions offer this service to their um to their their members now the best thing for you to do is get with your bank who you have a relationship with you go to your bank and let them know that you're in the process of trying to rebuild your credit and you're one a you're wanting a um line of credit where you put your own money in there you put your money in there and they will actually report it to the credit bureaus which is great and then you also have the self-lending not really not really certain about that or how that works i have seen some derogatory remarks on people's credit report so i'm not really sure how that works so i don't can't say that i highly recommend that one but i will say that first premier bank i know is a good one and then you have capital one they have a secure credit card and there's a lot of banks that uh orion too i think orion does have one most credit unions do because credit unions are they're always family based and they always are going to be on second chances so if you have a bank account then i would highly recommend that you go through whoever you're banking with and get a secured line of credit and a secured line of credit again is they'll take a certain amount of money out of your account and they'll put it in your account and as you use it you pay it back and it reports to your credit bureau so now you have an account that you're actively paying on 
and by you actively paying on this account it actually is giving you your credit scores okay you cannot expect high credit scores if you do not have anything that's actively reporting on your credit report in good standing that is common sense but I do know and understand that sometimes you have a lot of people that just don't know but you know credit restoration my program I'm not going to ever tell anyone yes when you leave my program you will be able to purchase the home there is a lot of different things that goes into purchasing a home your income your debt your scores um do you have bankruptcy there's a lot of different things that go into who qualifies and who does not qualify to purchase a home so that is something that a lender can assist you with now i can look at your scores i do know the scores have to be between 620 640 if you're wanting to do a conventional it has to be over 640 660 i have a lot of lenders that i can reach out to that can assist with different scoring but i do know that scores of 580 and under they're very very risky and i really don't like to deal with those um so how can I report rent payments? I don't think the company is reporting it to my credit. No, rent payments does not report to credit report. The, the, the things that do not report is your light bill, phone bill, cable, uh, internet, rent. None of those things will report. Now you can ask your uh, the rental company because sometimes you can pay them. To report it i think it's called rent to report or went to rent to payment i'm not sure but that's something you can definitely research google how can i um start reporting my rent payments or something i'm not really certain about that because still that will be a trade line but my only fear with that is if anything happens or they're not satisfied with it and it starts to report incorrectly i really don't trust um the rental thing because i know a lot of apartments are very very um unfair when it comes down to what you owe and things of that nature so that's my only concern with that now um first south yes first south does offer uh hit play e uh first south does offer orion for sure i think does like i said most credit unions will and like i told you guys before credit utilization i cannot stress this enough y'all pay those cards down the program Oh, did you push play? Mm -mm. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> the um the utilization affects your scores so much, y'all. Y'all have no idea. Do something to where you can actually see because when I tell my clients this and they actually do it, they literally see that um that their scores dropped tremendously. Like I posted not too long ago, maybe a week ago, I posted on there on my page where some, one of my clients scores dropped 123 points because of utilization. It's serious. And I don't think people understand that. If you're not monitoring your scores like you should be, then you wouldn't understand it. But if you see on there that you pay that car down. Now, one of the things that I wanted you guys to know as well if you pay that balance down and turn around and use that card a week later then when it re when it reports to the credit bureau it's going to report the high balance not your payment creditors does not report your payments every time you make a payment it only reports once a month and that's on the statement date so if you're wanting to get your utilization together i highly recommend that you contact your creditor whoever whatever credit card it is and once you contact them you can actually ask them when do they report what's the reporting date and they will tell you that way you can always know to keep their balance down around that date that's reporting nicole yes i saw a hundred point decrease because i use my card i pay my cards and i'm up 100 points it's detrimental and I, I can't stress that enough i don't know how much i can post this all day and all night but even people in my program i see their scores climbing 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 and then i'll pull it the next 30 days and their scores have dropped tremendously and i'm just not understanding you know why the score is dropping because i look at that when i see my my client scores decreasing i'm very interested in to know why whether it's a new collection pop-up whether it's it's something to that nature um ronnie you know i was on your ass too um what's a good way to pay your higher cards back Charade, put it up put put it up and pay it pay i will pay every two weeks or every week however much time however much you get paid if you get paid every week i would believe that you know i you ain't gonna wear me um but if you were to make those payments uh every week it'll it'll knock that balance down you also can reach out to your your credit card company and your credit card company will actually most times and i've done it several times on several cards if you call your credit card company more than likely they will actually reduce your um interest 
or they can do something to where they can stop the interest until you get caught up in, on the payments. They don't always do that, but it depends on your credit history and your relationship with them. They may. I pay my credit cards down to zero and credit scores drop 25 points. Alicia, that is not why your scores drop. Nope. You need to check and see what else has happened. Um, but your scores will not drop if you pay your balance down to zero. That's not that's not true. Do you know if there are any home buying seminars coming up? Hey, Kay, I don't at this moment. I will be having one in the next 30 to 45 days. Not exactly sure when, but I will definitely keep you posted um, via Facebook. Um, yes, yeah, Charday. So with Navy Federal, now let me say this. I've been with Navy Federal since 04. Ever since I've been with Navy Federal, I have three credit cards, two lines of credit with them i do not recommend a business account i do have my business account with regions but with navy federal i do not recommend business uh having a business account with them because i think they're more family oriented so i think they are they're more good with consumers versus businesses so i really wouldn't recommend them for because i did have my tempting berries business account with them and they wouldn't give me anything business related and i'm with the regions and i got over three hundred thousand dollars in in business credit with them uh so i would definitely recommend regions versus navy federal but Lita, I'll get with you on that. I got you. I, are you with Navy Federal, Lita? If not, I'll help you with that. Um, it's 30% Charde. So what you do is you take your credit limit. If your credit limit is $500, you multiply that by 30%. And whatever the amount is that you came up with, that's the amount that if your if your limit, if your balance goes over that amount, your scores are going to drop. And that's a fact. That's not that's I will put money on that one. I only carry one card with me to eliminate going my utilization. So, Melissa, what I do is I do a, a card welfare check every 30 to 45 days um, because it, it does get away from you. Sometimes you can swipe those cards and those little 30 40 50 dollars they start to add up, right? So, what I do is I go through all of my cards and I check my apps and I look and see what my balances are. If I am 30 40 50 dollars over, whatever amount I'm over, I go ahead and pay that balance down immediately. Um, you do not have to pay your cards down all the way to zero dollars. That does not help you even more. But what I will recommend is that you pay it down at least 30 percent. You will be highly surprised how much your scores will increase alone with you just paying your balances down to under 30 percent utilization. So, Bracey, what I did, um, the first, the very first step with building your business credit, in my opinion, I'm not an expert in business credit and I don't uh, offer those services. But for me personally, what I did was I first opened up a business account. When I opened up my business account, I run all of my income through my business account, whether it's credit, taxes, real estate, all of my income goes through there. Now, I do disperse it out accordingly to my personal and pay myself, but I, I run all of my money through my um my business account and when i run all of my money through my business account i just started doing uh applying in regions i apply for a business credit card now let me say this when you're doing that um bracy you will definitely have to be a personal guarantee so it will be a you will be the guarantor over the account meaning they will pull your personal credit so before you start to build your business credit you will certainly have to have decent um personal credit because they will pull your personal credit as well until you actually build your business credit that i do know um how long after we do that do you suggest we apply for home loan Charday? that's something i can't answer i don't know I, again the um, it depends on your scores your income your debt it, it depends on a lot of other stuff i'm not going to go into that because i'm not a lender but um that i don't know any information i mean you you can do that and still be in the 500 so i'm not sure it would just depend on what um where your scores are and if you're working do you have two years of employment uh, and late payments and all that. Have you had a bankruptcy? All that. It's a lot to go into that, so I can't answer that. Do you recommend using your cards to pay monthly bills and just paying them off in full every month? Melissa, let me tell you what I do. I have two American Express, and I actually drop the link down here because you will actually get free sky miles if you do so. But I have a American Express Gold and an American Express Platinum. My son has the same two as well as my mom. And we all pay, I pay all of my everyday bills with those credit cards. And I actually travel for free. Corey and I have at least two um, free plane, you know, trips using our Sky Miles. So that is definitely something that I highly recommend doing because you have a lot of cards that give a lot of uh, bonuses. So that's something that I do recommend, especially with business as well. The more you pay your bills, like all I pay all of my my internet bills and everything because you get a point per dollar. So I have about ten, fifteen thousand dollar overhead a month in bills just for my business. And with me doing that, I always get all of these points, all of these extra miles, and all that kind of stuff. So it actually benefits me in the long run, and I do pay it. Business is a little bit different; it's a thirty day turnaround, so I pay the bill off every thirty days, and that's that's there. But personal credit, you can do the same thing as well. You guys, please, please, please understand. 
credit utilization is imperative. You have to keep those balances down. Even if you do your own check, you will see when you pay those cards down, you will see your scores tremendously increase, but not paying them down to turn around and use it right the next day. Paying it down and then turn around and using it, they only report to the bureaus once a month. They did not report every time you make a payment. I haven't done it yet, Melissa. I'll do it when we get off of here. Um, Nicole, for credit building, I recommend Capital One, um, the Secure Card, or First Premier. Those are the two that I started with years and years ago. This was back before I had Michaela, and she... <sighs> Oh, yeah, it's been over 13, 14, maybe 15 years. That's what I use. Nicole Walls, thank you. Capital One Secured Car, a pretty good car. Uh, yes, uh, I have seen a lot of progress with my clients using those. Now, I also have a lot of progress with my clients when they do the secured lines of credit through their banks. So it would just depend on what kind of relationship you have, because I know a lot of people don't have, you know, bank accounts for whatever reasons. What if you apply for Capital One and you keep getting denied, not applying back to back like a year or so? Marshanique, um, that means that there's something on your credit report that's, that's triggering you to get denied. Now, secure credit cards, I always highly recommend because it, it's basically your own money. Hey, Veronica. It's your own money. So, basically, it's just saying that. But if you have a bank account, use that to your advantage. Go to your bank and ask them for your uh, a, a secure line of credit or a secure credit card they may have it they may offer it pay the cards down and put them up it makes a big impact kevin you better tell them how you went you had a 250 point increase and now you're gonna own a home you better tell them kevin i wish i could post this screenshot in your comments my experience alert said your credit usage significantly decreased to zero so i'm not sure why else it could have dropped oh alicia i'm not sure um I'm not sure. I've never seen that happen before, but most times it could be. I don't. I don't know why. I'm. I'm sorry. I don't know. Question for someone that on Facebook. Do you? Do you have to be on your job in order to get pre-approved for a home? Yes. Uh, so Jackie, you do have to have at least two years of employment history if you are a W two stated. If you're self-employed, then I do have some some lenders that can actually use twelve months of bank statements as a bank statement loan. But you do have to run all of your money through there. That's a lot of things. I mean, that's something that a lot of us don't do. I do, but that's some things that they don't. If you also first for me, if you need to pay the balance down, they allow you to freeze your card with no interest until you pay. It really help. Melissa, that's great. It, thank you. Uh, First Premier Bank, um, they have an option to where you can freeze the account with no interest until you pay it. And that will definitely help. But First Premier Bank really give very low limits. Um, I have one with them and I that's the, my lease card. I think I have a $1,500 limit with them, but I've had them since 2004 or five. Um, But I keep that card because it's my oldest card. I've had it the longest. So it gives me the age of the credit that I need. And that, that's, that increases my scores too. So that helps. You're welcome, Jackie. So pay those cards down. That is definitely so. And also when you get and allow people to put you as an authorized user on your on your credit, make sure you know if they miss a payment, you miss the payment. It's going to report on your credit report exactly like it reports on somebody else's. Now, if you want to add yourself on a trade line, the questions that you need to know are if you're going to go to a family friend, spouse, mate, a uh, family member, ask them. Before they add you on a trade line or on a authorized user card, what is your balance? What is your limit? You make the determination yourself. Don't just let people add you on credit cards and you have no idea the history of that card. If they have two years of missed payments, that's going to go on your credit report. So what's the purpose of you adding somebody else's derogatory account on your credit report if you're trying to build or fix, you know, restore your credit? That makes no sense. But, you know, unfortunately, with all of the bad... Um, seeds that I've been getting in my credit program. Uh, I, no matter how much I speak and I'm, how much, and I'm not going to allow anybody to get me out of character. And so that's the reason why I, now I'm going to screen very closely who I allow in my credit program. And it maybe happens a handful of times. I've been doing credit for six years and it's expected. Everybody's not going to be pleased, especially when you're completely illiterate to credit. Not illiterate, of course, but I'm just saying to credit, um, you're not really familiar or um, knowledgeable about the credit process and how you're scored. But again, if you don't have any positive accounts, you cannot expect to leave my program with a 700 credit score. It's just not going to happen. Um, so that is one of the things that I do want to recommend. If you do enroll in anyone's credit program, just know if you have all derogatory, give it time. You cannot enroll in a credit program. It took you 30, 40 plus years to ruin the credit profile. So it's not going to be fixed overnight. That is definitely not something that's going to happen. So I do want to reiterate that 
when you're enrolling in my or whoever else's credit restoration program, I don't know what they're doing. And I have heard that a lot of people are asking their clients to file false police reports. That is something you would never, ever hear me do. I would never uh, um, ask my clients to file a false police report. That is illegal and it definitely can end you in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Chandria, medical bill knocked my score 45 points. How bad does that hurt when you apply for a home loan? Medical bills don't really affect Chandria. Um, they really don't hurt you that much, but um, it just depends on what other accounts you have. So again, that's something that we, you have to look over the profile as a whole to see how much that would determine. But um, if there is a payment on the report stating that it's a monthly payment, then you must certainly have to uh, include that in, into your debt to income ratio. If I request to be removed from one of my husband's credit cards, do I need to send a letter to the credit bureau to make sure? Melanie, you might can just call them, but that happens a lot. You know, I have a lot of clients who they have spouses and they're on, of course, you know, you want to be able to use their card, vice versa, but it's just, it's affecting you times too. So if you have a card of your own that you're over the utilization on and then your husband has one, so now you have two that's over utilization, your score is being dropped 30% times too. Nobody understands how detrimental credit utilization is and if you research it if you google credit utilization right now you will see that it tells you 30 percent of your score that is the number one thing a lot of us memphis americans period a lot of us slack it we overutilize those cars and we pay $25 a month and then when you look around your balance is higher than your limit and the reason for that is because every time you make a monthly payment, you're only paying your interest on that account. You're not even paying the actual balance down. You're only paying the interest, and that's a portion of it. So be really weary about that, guys. We got to do a whole lot better. I see I have over 600 active clients in my account, in my in my, in my my program right now. Um, it's, it, it, I, I, I pull accounts every single day, and when I go through them, it's just unfortunate. Prime example, Navy Federal account. Credit limit $500, balance 504. Scores have dropped tremendously. So I have to contact this client and let her know that you need to pay this balance down to at least 150. So that's what I do is I keep, I educate you guys regarding the, the program and let you know, hey, you know, you have these derogatory accounts and you need to, you need, we need to get these off. We need to go ahead and start addressing these and updating your personal information, getting these accounts active or getting them back current i get people to enroll in my program and start missing payments consecutively don't understand how that goes and i know sometimes life happens or we just actually forget I always set up your payments on automatic pay automatic pay is going to save your life even if you pay the minimal even if you it, it, so if you do forget at least it's paid you know at least the minimum is paid but as adults you know it's just a lot of things that we don't we don't think about. We have to start doing better with our credit. This is not the golden days and the old days where we don't need credit. Anything that you do, you have to have credit. So that is something that I want you guys to understand. Do not be held back and be held to certain areas or certain jobs uh, because you have not done what you should have done in your previous years. We all can. We all have made mistakes and we all have been in situations to where life has happened. Surgeries, divorces, shit happens. But at the end of the day, it's, it's about what we're going to do now because there's absolutely no reason for, for you to be in a situation now in this day and time. No reason. Uh, there is even some credit people that take monthly payments. I don't, but there are some that do. So there's a lot of great reputable credit companies here in the city that actually um, offer monthly payments. I don't because my program, sometimes I, I work on all of the collections at one time. I don't do two or three at a time. So I don't know how anybody else works, but I actually work on everything on the report at one time. At what age should I start adding my oldest? Establish your credit. He'll be 16 this year. Now was the time, Melissa. Do it now. By the time he's 21, he'll have five years of payment uh, of credit history. Add him now. So what you would do with your teenage children, you would add them as an authorized user. Wait about 60 days. Apply for them a credit card. Use that credit card. Pay it. Use it. Pay it. Use it. Pay it. Now they have their own credit and they can get off of your credit. Now they actually have established credit. By the time he's 21, he can actually go buy a home because he has five years of established credit. So definitely do that. I did that with my son and he's at a 760. And he has eight credit cards. I have them. I use them and I pay them. I added my husband to my three-year credit card and his score went up 200 points. Christina? 
Yes, that's what I did to Jalen, and it 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 it. it you'll be surprised, but those are good credit cards, Christina, because you're responsible and you make sure those those balances stay low. You pay your bills like you should, and that's the reason why his went up. Now I guarantee you, you overutilize that card. Both of y'all scores are going to drop because it's reporting to his just as if it's reporting yours. Someone reached out to me today asking why their score went down after they paid their cards off. I said it's something else on your credit. Yeah, Melanie. You know, it's just, I hate credit karma. They don't they don't report accurately and it gives them, it just doesn't report accurately. It's, all the information is wrong. Uh, you're welcome, Alicia. Uh, can you leave? Sure, my shrink, I will. But don't they add them until they are paid, correct? But don't add them until... Yeah, so me personally, if I know I have a friend and I know she shopped too much, I don't want to be on her credit card because just because her balance is low right now does not mean it's going to be low a week from now. So you certainly need to make sure that they're actively paying. And like I would say maybe older, you got your older people that don't play about their credit. And those are the people that are going to make sure that you, because they understand it. You know, make sure the person understands credit utilization because if you go on their credit card and they're reckless and they, they forget to make a payment, and they don't have no automatic pay. When it reports late on theirs, it's going to report late on yours too. And that is your debt. If you're an authorized user, that is your debt on your credit report. And it's actually going to count against you on your debt to income ratio. I'm interested in person at home within six months, but I'm not sure if I need to start with your program first. Christine, um, you're more than welcome to do a consultation. It's Crystal Oliver. It's C-R-Y-S-T-E-L-L-O-L-I-V-E-R.com. Um, and we can do a consultation and definitely know from there. Hey, what do you suggest besides credit cards? Money? Sierra, I recommend highly Identity IQ. Um, I can send you the link for that. Identity IQ has three and it's very easy to read. That's one of the things that I always, always, always make sure that I have my clients use. There is absolutely no other option. You have to use credit Identity IQ for your monitoring. It, e it emails you every single time your address is changed. If something reports, anything's applied for, it, it emails you immediately. So that's definitely who I would recommend, especially if you're trying to build your credit and, and maintain it. Adrian, your whole homeowner. Congratulations, friend. Thanks, Tanya. You're welcome, Kristen. So, yeah. So, to sum everything up, credit utilization. Do a welfare check on your credit cards. Pull your credit cards out right now. Look up those apps. Look on that app and see what your balance is. If your balance is over the 30% utilization, pay that card down. So, if it's, say, for instance, you have a $500 credit limit. And $500, 30% of that is $150. If your balance is $175, pay the $25 to get it under the $150. Because if you do that... You don't have to pay it all the way down, but you do have to pay it under 30%. If your, if your balance is $3, $1, $2 over the credit utilization, it's going to drop your scores. It doesn't matter how much over. I hear people, they want to argue all day long when I'm doing, but it's only $5 over. It doesn't matter. If it's $2 over, what your 30% is, is going to affect your scores. The system does not dictate, oh, it's just a little over, a little under. It's going to dictate whether it is under or over utilization. And if I promise you, if you get this down, I can't preach this enough. I talk about it all, all, all the time. If you start to, to pay more attention on how you're using those cards, I guarantee you, you will get higher limits. I can't apply for a credit card right now because I have a $55,000 credit card with Navy Federal. Okay. My balance is maybe $1,200. So if I go apply for something else right now, I'll get a $50,000 credit limit because they trust me with it because I'm not reckless with the limit that I have. If you have a limit and you're reckless with a small limit, how do you think that they're going to judge you if you have a much, much higher limit? If you can't maintain a $500 limit, that is the mentality of the credit uh, creditors. And that's the reason why when you apply, you immediately $500 limit. I can't have $5,500 limit cards. You know, I have over $360,000 of credit cards and they all are available credit because I am actively aware of what my balances are. I don't overutilize, period. If I want to make a major purchase, I can. That's what it's for. But if I make a major purchase, I'm going to automatically pay that card by the actual statement date. So when it reports and then a lot of times if you want to make up, if you want to make a major purchase, fine, make it. But already have in your mind how you're going to pay that balance down. Don't make a major purchase and, and, and not have a plan. You have to have a plan when you're spending that kind of money to make it down. Because what happens is, and I see it all the time, people always start off with amazing credit. You have A1 credit, perfect credit, and you get all these credit cards. And guess what? You don't spend every dime on every last one of them. Now you got 10 credit cards. Now you're, you got $150 payments on 10 credit cards. Why would people, you got a lot of people that don't pay those 150 times 10 because they're like, 
Ain't nothing else on the card. I don't spend all the money, so they stop paying them. That's how credit reports start to go from sugar to shit real quick. Because they say, well, ain't no more money left on the card. You don't spend it all. You don't, you had a $25,000 credit card. You don't spend $26,000. You're only paying $25 a month. And when you look up now, it's, it's it, the balance is increasing, increasing. And it's because you have not had a, you didn't have a plan in place as to how to pay that debt down. Use the credit cards. I'm not saying don't, but I already have a plan on how you're going to pay it down. Okay, if I'm going to spend $10,000 on this, I'm going to pay $1,000 for the next 10 months. $1,000 for the next 10 months is two fifty a week. So I think that, you know, our priorities are in the wrong places. Instead of, you know, risk for one month, just risk not going out, not eating fast food, you know, whatever you love to do, not buying the bottles of wine every other day. I miss my wine. But that those are the things that makes make us responsible adults what amount of debt would you recommend I, I don't recommend bankruptcy period Charday. the only time that i can understand why people do uh, file bankruptcy is if they have something to lose like if their car or their home is under uh about to get taken or their checks have started to get um uh, their checks have started to get um uh, taken or, or garnish. That's the only time that I can understand why somebody files bankruptcy, but I'm not a bankruptcy attorney. There is a great bankruptcy attorney here, preferred title in escrow. Um, Ursula Jones, she's amazing. She is at, um, preferred title in escrow and she can actually help you and assist you with a consultation regarding, um, you know, if that's the best situation for you. I know sometimes we all have to have it, but I don't, I don't, I frown upon bankruptcy only because I see how it affects a lot of people's lives. It's, it's detrimental. Um, so you just got approved, Charlotte. Congratulations, girlfriend. Do you recommend using your card every month? I go about two or three months at a time. Me, Christina, Christ, use your card the way you feel fit. I don't use my card often like that either. So you're not by yourself. I do not use my card every single month. There is nothing that states you have to use your card every month or it's going to increase or decrease your credit score. So no, you're doing right. Use those cards the way you need to. Now, if you start going two years without using them, I got an email once before from my target card saying if I didn't use it, then they were going to cancel it. But yeah, they do do, they will close it, but not for a couple of months. Oh, Sade. So you see what I'm saying? Now, Sade just stated that they gave her $25,000 credit card and she charged it up and you paying it back. That's that that's what happens. You have to be mentally responsible to receive that kind of credit card. You can't just go swiping and not have a plan. Do not use those credit cards until you have one, unless you have a plan on how you're going to pay it back. If I go and say, you know, sometimes I ask her to say, you know what? I want to go buy me something nice. I want to go redo my living room. It's going to cost me $8,000. i am going to say, okay, $8,000. So over the next two months, I'm going to pay such and such amount. I have a plan to pay the debt off before I get, paying, get caught up in paying $100 minimal a month. So now when the next bill roll around, I have a $250 interest already accumulated. So when I pay $100 minimal, I'm only paying $100 of that $250. So now I owe $10,250. So, have a plan before um, you do that. So, Sade, one year of not working. You have to have at least 24 months of consecutive work history in order to qualify for a FHA loan or a um, so any, any federal loan. Like, uh, like I said, unless, that's, um, unless you are um, self-employed. So, there are programs for self-employed as well. Tasha, you too? Get it together. So, what we do is, okay... So let's just see if you have a credit card and you have a $25,000 credit card, give yourself two years, 24 months. You divide 24 months, that's $1,000 a month. If you have a $25,000 debt, you can pay that debt off in two years realistically. So just just pay $250, $250 a week for the next two years, you will knock that balance down. Don't get rid of that card. Navy Federal is one of the companies that I definitely would not ruin my relationship with they're too amazing i wouldn't i mean they give you away they give away money that i would not ruin my relationship with navy federal i would definitely try to figure out a plan on how to pay those debts down so take your credit card you guys and get a oh, okay tasha good you gotta have a plan even before you get a credit card like you have to have you have to i'm not gonna pay anything that i can't pay cash for three times that's my that's my motto if i can't pay for it three times i'm not gonna go use my credit card for it 
okay? Credit cards are strictly for emergencies, splurging. You want to go out and have fun and enjoy your night. When you get paid, pay it down 30%, you know? And and, and, and it's, that's pretty much how, that's how you build your credit. And that's definitely how you do not end up in debt. And then you look up one day, you have... Four credit cards, Discover, Chase, you got American Express, you got all these great credit cards. But boom, now you're in debt so far over your head. You just decide, you know what, I can't afford to keep up with these payments now. Now all that money is spent. Now you have four collections all at one time. We got to be more responsible. No, we are definitely paying more than 1000 I froze both of them. Good, 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 good for you. Hey, Sherman. So, again, you guys, go to those credit cards. Look at those apps or log in to your credit report, um, to your credit your credit card. Look at what your balance is. Look at what your limit is. I guarantee you, if you do this for at least six months, every single time you apply for a credit line increase, you're going to get it. Every single time. I'm not talking about four or $500. I'm talking about thousands. With Navy Federal, I started at $12,000. i am at fifty five now. Okay? That's the reason why I say... You have to be responsible with what you currently have before they would actually even think about giving you another dollar. So before you start trying to apply for these credit cards and you get these $400 and $500 limits, it's setting you up. Because if you have five credit cards that are all $500 limits, you can get gas and be of utilization. Hell, that damn truck I got take a hundred some dollars to fill up anyway. Chavelle, great question. Do you pay off collections? Hell to the no. I would not recommend paying off collections if you do. If you do pay off collections, be careful. What I recommend you do is called a pay for delete. A pay for delete is P A Y F O R delete. Pay for delete. This means that I'm going to tell you I will pay you this collection off, but when I pay you, you have to delete it off my credit report. That's the only way that I recommend that you pay a collection. If you pay a collection, make sure you ask for a pay for delete. Um, Peel, like I was saying, I was letting everyone know how, and you've been amazing. I love you, my girl. I love you to death because you're so patient and you understand. But I do have a lot of clients who don't understand that if you have nothing but derogatory accounts, you will not expect a 600, 700 credit score in my program because you do not have anything that you're actively paying on. And as long as you understand that, I will work my ass off to make sure. Even I have, I have files right now, literally over 80% of my files I have been working on for eight, nine months. Eight nine months, and I do not charge an extra dime. I have extended. I have extended over ninety percent of my files due to the fact of COVID. COVID has not been sending because of COVID. They have not been mailing out any paper uh, updates. I have not had any clients say that they got an update. They have updated it on the credit report, but the bureaus are not mailing out any paper mail for some reason. It's a lot of my clients that haven't gotten any. Um, so that's that. But um, I'm definitely going to change some things in my program. That was my question. I have two or three things that are about 150 or less. I wanted to know. Yes, the arrow. Okay, so what you would do is you will call the creditor, M M MGM or whatever it is, whatever the collection agency is, you will call them and say, hey, I want to do a pay for delete. If I pay you this 150, I need a pay for delete letter. They will actually email you the letter as soon as your payment posts. But I recommend that you pay with a credit card or a debit card. If you do a check by phone, it takes about 7 to 14 days and it gets really messy because by then they don't want to send you the letter. I want this shit done today. So when you do call them and pay it off, make sure you get a pay for delete. And if you do the pay for delete, as soon as you pay it off, it's deleted off your credit report. Now, I see a lot of people with collections with zero balances and they say, well, I paid their collection off. It does not matter. It's still a, now it's just a paid collection. And that's even worse. You need to always make sure that if you pay a collection off, you ask for a pay for delete. A pay for delete would actually remove it after you pay it. So it's like it never existed. That is what I highly recommend you guys do um, for that uh, purpose alone. So if anybody have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm going to wrap up here. I got to update some more of my credit profiles and I have a showing at 530. So if you have any questions, chime in now. Um, I, I want us to see us all succeed. A lot of things that people don't understand relating to credit is very imperative that you ask me uh, any questions. Kevin, it absolutely is. Gotcha, because I've done really good. I'm in the 600 range, but I just want to know that. Yes, Sierra. So I can guarantee you, once you pay those off and they delete them, your scores are going to jump up probably another 60 points. So you'll be fine, but just make sure you do it the right way. There's always a right and wrong way to do everything, and it's certainly one of the things that I would highly recommend. If you do pay a collection off, tell them they, they need to delete it because that's all they want anyway. Nine times out of ten, they didn't, they didn't pay but a third for the collection. Um, from the actual uh, creditor and the creditor actually sold it to them because they couldn't collect on it anymore because it's over seven years old So that's the reason why you always say dang this account. Oh, I ain't had no AT&T phone in 12 years It's because they're constantly selling it to other collection agencies 
Yolanda, I spoke on it earlier. Um, I'm not a bankruptcy attorney. And in certain situations, of course, that will vary. It all depends on what your situation is and what is all in jeopardy and at risk. So I highly recommend you contact Preferred Title and Escrow. Her name is Ursula Jones. She's a great bankruptcy attorney, and she can actually do a consultation with you and assist you with that. I can't assist with bankruptcy because I'm not. Um, that's not my. That's not my field. So I don't want to give you inaccurate information. Once you use your credit card, how soon should I pay that off? Jasmine, it's not about how you paying it off. Make sure you keep it under 30%. So again, like I stated initially, if you have a $500 limit, you multiply that by 30%. The balance is $150. Every time that balance goes over $150 on that credit card, your scores are going to drop. As long as your balance is always under 30% of the actual limit, you'll be fine. Never, You don't have to pay that card all the way off. That's not necessary. Okay, Jennifer, you can go online on crystaloliver.com. The spelling of my name, make sure you realize how it was spelled because it's spelled a little bit different. Um, if have a credit card with a low credit limit like $350, is that even worth having? Sure, absolutely. Even if it was a $150 credit limit, it's, it's not about that. It's about how you're using that card. You can't, if you have a $350 limit, never let your balance go over $90 because they're going to watch how responsible you are with this, that $350. And after $350, next, in the next couple of months, you might even get a, a, a increase to $1,000. But they're going to watch you if you have shaky or, or if you have a, a, a questionable credit, they're going to give you those little amounts to watch you. So be careful how you use those utilizations and make sure you be careful on how you uh, do that. Bye, Mommy. <laughs> Goofy. Her look at me. It's gone. So um, that's how. Okay. That is how I would highly recommend you guys do. Like I said, you got to think about if it was you. You know, if I gave you $500 and the next time I see you, you wrote. You know, if you if I loan you five hundred dollars on Monday and I see you Tuesday, you ain't got a quarter. You know, I wouldn't give you any more money because you're, it, to me, it, it'll look like you're reckless with the money. So that's exactly how creditors look. Um, you have to understand how how many people file bankruptcy in a heartbeat. So if you look like a bankruptcy risk, which technically you would look like that if every card that you have is almost over utilization. If you have a card and every card that you have is over your utilization thirty percent, then they're going to start dropping your scores. I'm going to tell you that too. I mean, your, your limits. Ha has anybody on here had a, had a, had several credit cards and they started using those credit cards, balance, balances start to get high and you look up and they don't reduce your credit limit. So it was 1500. Now they don't drop it to a thousand or dropped it to 500. Have anybody ever, ever experienced that? Well, you had several credit cards and then you look up and look on, on your credit, uh, you get an email or a text message or, uh, a notification on the app that your credit limit have increased. So Lisa, that's why. Um, so Raven, that is why they do that. If you, so just know that's how bad your scores drop when your credit utilization is high. Because your scores will drop 100 points. You'll go from a 700 to a 600 or a 600 to a 500. Just like that. And when your scores drop, the creditors have, they're pulling, they're doing soft pulls every 30 days on your credit report. It's not going to show as, a, as an inquiry. But when you apply for a credit card, what people don't know is you give them permission to do soft pulls on your credit uh, report. This is also the reason why you have a lot of new collections popping up from several years ago. Creditors can see when you're working on your credit and they see your scores are increasing. When they see your scores are increasing, they say, hey, okay, well, she's trying to work on something. She has something up her sleeve. So let me go ahead and throw this old collection on here because nine times out of ten, she's either going to pay it or she's going to try to call and get it resolved because she's working on her credit. That's why you had, when you're in a credit program, it's like you getting 10, 15 collections coming from accounts that you had 15, 20 years ago. When you have high credit utilization, you guys, that is the reason why your limits drop. You never know why. And a lot of people, sometimes a lot of the creditors will actually close your accounts. They will close your credit, your credit card account because they see that you're actually looking like a bankruptcy risk. Because they're saying, okay, well, she has six cards. Her scores don't drop 100 points. She's going to overutilize these cards. She got balances extremely high. I guarantee you, they're going to decrease those limits. If you have high limits, they're going to decrease it. I have a friend, um, had an American Express card, had a $30,000 limit. <clears throat> Scores started to increase because she ended up using those credit cards and didn't pay them down for months. And when she didn't pay them down for months, her score dropped over 100 points and American Express took her whole limit, closed the whole card out. 
I'm telling you. So it's, it's, it's just a lot of different, it's a lot of different reasons why it's important for you to keep those utilizations down. One of the most reasons is for your scores. Your scores are going to decrease. Then also is you, if you keep the utilization scores down, you are going to get higher limits. It is a proven fact. I have done it myself. And there has never been a time I applied for a card and I have not gotten approved for under $10,000. That's just how it goes. I'm always going to get approved for at least $10,000 or higher. And that's with my business credit too. Thanks, Jackie. I'm always going to make sure that I'm doing my best. But what I cannot do is deliver unrealistic expectations. And with those are the kind of people that I will not extend your program. My program, my contract clearly states that my program is for four months. And I can guarantee you over 90% of the people in my program can tell you I have never closed a file out in, in exactly four months. So I do my best to try to make sure that I'm doing 100%. You know, my, I actually wouldn't have as many clients, open clients that I would have right now if I would close every file out after four months. But I don't because I do know that things happen. A lot of times these new collections pop up. I don't even call and reach out to my clients. I just, you know, I just try to handle them um, because I do know how this goes. So you just have to be patient. You cannot get into a credit program and expect this stuff to be rushed. It does not work that way. And I'm definitely not going to be hounded. And let me also say this, you guys. Um, enrolling in a credit program does not give you 24 hour access to me okay enrolling in my program I'm going to do my job but that does not mean you can text and call me and, 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 and ask me for advice on every single thing that you can think of when you think of it it doesn't work that way so please respect that Okay, Sierra, if someone asks you as an authorized user, does my score affect theirs? No. Your score does not affect theirs. No, it's the opposite. They're, they're on yours. So, you no, know, this doesn't work that way. It actually will. Um, it will increase your scores if that card is any good, if that account is any good. So, no, it does not, it does not work backwards. It doesn't affect theirs. So, her, she asked you if someone asks her as an authorized user, will her scores affect theirs? And that's a no. If they will not affect theirs. Thanks, Carla. Make sure you use the cards because they will cut them off. Yes. Um, so, LaChandra, it takes a minute for that, though. It takes a few months, and I did touch on that. I don't, Ashley. I don't do... I, I'm not an expert with business credit. I just can... I can just... Um, like I speak, talk earlier on it, I literally... Um, I just offer, you know, what I've experienced, but that's not something that I do. I think a girl named Jasmine on here does... Um, I can't think of her last name right now, but she's she's on here. She I think she does business credit. I've heard her name a couple of times. She's I heard she's pretty good. Um, thank you for the information. I just updated my budget file with you. Tanika. Now watch your scores increase. I love you too, Sierra. Um Tanika, you watch your scores increase. Like you pay those down. So I want you guys to do this, and I want you guys to either text me or call me or inbox me or email me and let me know. Pay those balances down, even if it's on one car. Let me say this: what I recommend. This is what I recommend in my consultations. Okay, give me y'all, give me y'all some free information. Um, if you have five credit cards and they're all over utilization, this is how you can actively help the situation. Choose, put them in order. Okay, so this one takes about two thousand to pay off. This one will take about five hundred to pay off. This one takes about twelve hundred to pay off. Put them in order. Of how much it will cost to pay off. Do the one that's most realistic. Ain't nobody got enough four five thousand dollars to pay off on the credit cards at one time. But what you can do is write down the limit and the balance and what the balance needs to be on each one. Write it down on your paper, your book, or your tablet or whatever. Write the balance of the credit card. Write down the limit of the credit card and what the thirty percent is. And Look and see which one will be the least to pay off because I would rather have three instead of five. Your scores will increase if you as you pay them down each account. So find out which one and actually increase your scores with paying the least down and start with that account. And then the one that takes the most, that's the one you can continuously work on. But you can go ahead and get the smaller amounts down and get those off and out of utilization. That way, when you start to apply for new credit cards and when you start to get apply for those increases, you will get it. They're not going to increase your credit limit if you are reckless with what you currently already have. So that is a given. That is a fact. And I have done that uh, myself. I am very, very cautious of my utilization because I see it affecting a lot of my clients daily. So um, that's what I want to reach out to you guys and talk about. I see it happen all the time. And a lot of my people don't understand that. And I really don't even know how else to say it. So I'm going to keep this um, here um, for anybody else who want to see it and watch it and get the information that I shared. And I just want to say you guys, thank you. I'm going to update my website to where everybody has to do a consultation. And if you have any questions, make sure you schedule your consultation at crystaloliver.com. Love you guys. Bye-bye.